This doctor highlights how biases and racism in psychiatry affects patients. When our education system and our medical system has been founded on racism and founded on racist practices, it is kind of in the fabric of, of our entire system. Hey doc, we're gonna need some meds for this agitated patient. They cannot calm down. Sure, let's give them some oral meds first. I wanna get them a chance to deescalate on their own. I'm ordering some shots right now. They're gonna need a heavy dose to put them down. Bias and racism in psychiatry is extremely prevalent and not only have I experienced it, I see it every day in the medical system and by medical professionals in general. Examples of that would be black children in particular are less likely to be treated with ADHD and more likely to be treated with oppositional defiant disorder. I'm gonna diagnose him with oppositional defiant disorder and he doesn't need any help in school. We're suspending him for five days and if he does it again, he's expelled. This kid is never in school. He's always doing drugs with his friends and we think he stole from the liquor store around the corner. So we're just gonna arrest him again. If you label them uh, as just oppositional or that their parenting is, is failing, you might not give them the appropriate treatment that they might need. According to Dr. Hobson, this can impact a child through adulthood, especially for BIPOC children. And so they're going to get in trouble, and then that leads to incarceration, which further escalates the cycle because they are not going to be getting mental health treatment as much as they could in the judicial system. And then when they get out, they're not equipped with the skills and treatment that they need. If we ignore the specific issue, we are going to perpetuate the oppression and the systemic demarginalization of BIPOC people. And if we do that, we're, we're really going to be failing as a country because we're not able to um, come together and treat all people equitably. Another example is when a Black person comes to a psychiatrist with the same symptoms as a white person. I think I can hear people whispering to me. That sounds like depression, maybe with some psychotic symptoms. I'll prescribe you an antidepressant and see if it gets better. Whenever I go out, I feel like everybody's judging me and looking at me. Sounds like schizophrenia. Um, I am gonna prescribe you some Haldol. They are more likely to be diagnosed with a psychotic disorder and treated for psychosis rather than a mood disorder. Even when there's psychotic symptoms, they are over-medicated or treated with medications that are out of date and that we don't use very often. Dr. Hobson also uses her platform to speak about the mental health conditions children in the U.S. foster care system face. You know what all foster children have in common? Some degree of trauma. So let's appropriately and equitably treat their trauma. The foster care system is severely under-resourced in terms of therapy treatment. So what happens is that they get taken to a psychiatrist, put on a bunch of meds to try to help with their behavior and their symptoms without the therapy component. The majority of research that's been done about medications diagnosis has primarily been done on white people. And so it is hard to extrapolate what's been done in research to our larger community and especially the BIPOC community because what has been studied has not necessarily been generalizable to everybody else um, and has not been looked at with a systemic lens and all the additional things that BIPOC individuals have to deal with and cope with on a day-to-day -day basis that white people don't, how that impacts mental health prescribing, how that impacts diagnosis, how that impacts treatment, all those things haven't been studied to a degree that, um, that they should be. Racism and its effect on the healthcare system is not taught at all in med school. I think nowadays it's beginning to be more talked about because more people are speaking about how it impacts patients and how it impacts healthcare workers. For mental health professionals and psychiatrists to correct bias and racism in the field, it's first really important to educate yourself um, about what's happening. I think that's, that's where it starts because until you understand the depth and the systemic nature of the problem, you might be operating at a, at a surface level approach. 